Good day, and welcome to another episode of the Sonic Curators being brought to you in part by the Whence Came You Podcast, the uh, Massachusetts Lodge of Research, and the Masonic Historical Preservation Society. I am joined here today with companion Luciano. Uh, he has brought his Masonic chapter penny with him, and we're going to talk a little bit about Masonic chapter pennies. Uh, now, Brother uh, Johnson did a piece about four years ago on his penny, and I believe Brother Jared did one also about five years ago on a beautiful uh, soapstone uh, chapter medallion that actually has the person's mark on it. And that's basically what we're going to center on today is the mark. Now, Lou, do you have any idea about the history of well, I do, but I'd rather hear you say it. <laughs> well, there is, from the minor research that I've done, I cannot find the actual first chapter that was ever issued in Masonic Penny. Uh, nor is there really any indication of when the penny was first uh, passed out to pennies. Though we do know that it was as early as the 1860s that pennies were given out. Um, there are a couple of books that were printed uh, that discuss Masonic chapter pennies. One of them, uh, and you can get this right off the internet on Google Books. This is the 1901 book by Dr. Uh, B.P. Wright, who was a 32nd degree Mason from Albany, uh, New York. And he wrote, I believe it's the first book on Masonic chapter pennies. And I photo download and photocopy that for my own records. There is another book which I consider to be the Bible of chapter penny collecting. And that was done by E.A. King in 1926. He did a high color, very hard to find, very expensive when you do find it. But I believe the book was reprinted in the 80s or 90s in both high color and soft color. Again, both of those are also hard to find and can also be very expensive. And then there was a, <clears throat> a third book that was published in 2015. I have yet to see this book except online. It is called The Masonic Chapter Pennies of the United States. And it was co-authored by Awaken and Await Waitley, I believe, in 2015. Now, Brother Wright talks about how the penny was introduced. Now... The penny was not always a piece that was given to the candidate. And I've actually brought my penny here today to show you. And Lou had brought his, which is also unusual because it has his mark on it. And it is a newer version of the penny, which I think we're all going to like because it is extremely unusual. Now, the penny came in... Uh, different materials, different sizes, different thicknesses. It had different designs on them. Um, it came in brass. I've seen gold tone, silver tone. I've seen silver. I've seen copper, which is the most popular of all. I've seen aluminum. Um, and ours is a brass penny that has then been enameled in, I believe it's three different colors that are on the penny. Very unusual. I've never seen another one like it since. Uh, it is a newer penny though that we've had uh, done. Now the penny has on the back, in most cases, a keystone. Not in all cases, but in most cases a keystone. And the inner circle of the keystone is where the person usually makes his mark. Making your mark is simple. When a person joins the chapter, his first degree is called a Mark Master Mason degree. And upon which, receiving that degree, he is usually given a small card or some sort of a form like this. And he is asked to put a simple device, simple device, in that circle. And below, his name and a short description of what the item is. Now, 
Not all chapters still do this. But after he makes his mark and turns it back in, it is then done up sometimes by a professional artist or an amateur artist or the individual himself and is placed into what is called the book of marks. And as you can see, the marks vary from person to person and it depends on his occupation, maybe his religion, maybe his uh, hobbies, maybe his initials, maybe a family crust, it could be anything. And he is not at liberty to change that mark, nor is he allowed to alter it in any way, shape, or form. That is his mark for his entire life. Now, just to ask you a question, Lou. Do you know how to date a Masonic? No, I do not. You can't. <laughs> because it is virtually impossible to date a chapter pen. The reason being, take for Cambridge, your chapter, had five different versions of that penny from 1864 to the current 2022 year. Five different versions. Now, the first three, and if we can get a good picture of this, and there will be a picture posted both on the Facebook and on YouTube on it. This penny first came out in silver, exactly like this design with the 1864 date. That is the date that we were founded uh, here in Cambridge. Uh, that was in the late 1860s, 1870s, that penny came out. Then they went, went to a brass penny, same design on it. And then this one, mine, which came out about 1900, 1910-ish, and lasted probably about the 1930s. And then again, we changed the design. Unfortunately, back in the 2000s, somebody broke into our safe, stole the remaining pennies along with some other artifacts that belong to the chapter, unfortunately, and we were penniless. Uh, one of the members uh, had a contact and he had this company make a new penny for us, something totally different. It is larger than the normal. It is heavier than the normal. We went back to the old brass penny and we went back to the old design that was on the penny. Except on Lou's penny, you will note that the date below says 1854. And that is because in the 2000s, Cambridge chapter merged with another chapter. We kept the name, but we took their date as presidents, 1854. Now, Brother Wright actually describes in his book the reason why these pennies may have been introduced into the chapter. Uh, as many of you may be well aware of about the anti-Masonic era or the Morgan era, uh, the 1840s, maybe up to 1850, we were just still coming out of that time period. And Brother Wright states in his book that the penny may have been a way of identification. Now, William Morgan is said to have worked his way into a Masonic Lodge or a couple of Masonic Lodge, and also, as the story goes, maybe a Royal Arch chapter in Upper State, New York. And we're not going to get into the Morgan affair because that's going to take hours, but his membership could not be verified and he disappeared. So perhaps the introduction of the penny into a Royal, Royal Arch chapter was a way of identification since in those days, we really didn't have dues cards like we do today. Now, whether or not these pennies were carried by the companion at all times and were shown before he went into a royal chapter, we do not know. But we do know that they were popular in the 1860s. Now, pennies, as I said, varied in different shapes and sizes. They also came in the shape of a half shekel. I've seen octagon. Um, I've seen pure silver. Uh, I believe I've seen once a solid gold one. And also, did you know, Lou, that some of the members actually took U.S. and foreign coinage, had the background of it, and had their mark put on it. So you will find, uh, say, a silver uh, dollar from the 1850s with a Masonic mark on the back of the coin. 
Um, <coughs> now, whether or not the coin with the date, say 1852, uh, is the date that the individual took his degrees, we do not know. Um, but unless you have a book of marks or the minutes of that particular chapter, then you have that person's mark, then you may be able to identify the year. Other than that, there is no way. Most commonly, and many of you people are going to chuckle about this because you know what I'm talking about. On any given day, you can look up eBay or some other sites and you find Masonic pennies. And even coin dealers will do this. Uh, a rare, scarce 1869 Masonic penny. Well, the 1869 date, as most of you are well, well aware of, is the date that the chapter was founded. It is not the date that the penny was struck. So that is a very common mistake on immature uh, sellers of these and on coin dealers. And as I said, coin dealers do sell them at shows and in their shops, but being a coin, they will mark them up according to their category on markings. Um, the penny over in Scotland, uh, there are actually Mark Master Mason Lodges in Scotland that only confer this degree. And they are separate from the Blue Lodge, they are separate from the chapter, and they are governed by a grand body of Mark Master Masons. Their pennies, for the most part, are smaller than ours, are absolutely gorgeous, and most of them I've seen come in bronze. But here in the U.S., most of ours are copper. Um, if you go online and look at Brother uh, Wright's book, uh, you see a host of different designs, including generic ones. And generic ones were ones that, if the chapter didn't want to make their penny or have one struck, uh, they could buy either from a company that sold them or through regalia companies, a penny called a generic penny. Some of them may have, every man receives his wage, or could just say one penny. Some of them didn't say anything at all. Some of them had a keystone on it. In some other cases, I've actually seen the scale of justice put on the penny. But be careful because not all pennies were Masonic. Other fraternal organizations used them. And unfortunately, everybody calls these things different names. They are a mock master mason penny or a chapter penny. They go by chapter coin. Masonic coin, Masonic penny, Masonic token, Masonic medallion, a host of different names. But Lou has brought his penny here today. He's going to show you the front of it, which is Cambridge Royal Arch chapter with the date. And then turning it around, the keystone is all done in white. And a large area is then for his mark. Now, the mark, Lou, actually goes back almost three years. 100 years. Um, even though it is something that has been done in the chapter longer than that, putting the mark on a piece of metal goes back to the 1750s, 1760s, where a member before the pennies came out would have what is called a mark master mason metal or jewel made. And you can Google uh, that and a ton of different um, items will come up. Uh, about the Mark Master Mason metal or shoe. Uh, they came in different sizes, they came in different shapes. They were worn either around the neck, pocket piece, or I have seen them worn with collars. And they dated from about the 1750s, 1760s to about the 1840s. Most of them came in silver, again, different shapes, and some of the more rarer ones I've seen come in gold. Uh, but Lou is going to talk about his mark today on the pen. So when I entered and joined Cambridge Royal Arch was actually 10 years ago, back in uh, <clears throat> May of 2012, I was given this task of deciding how I, what I wanted to make for a mark. And I, I was confused at first. I didn't know how I wanted to be represented because I knew just like he said, once it's in there, it's in there. Um, and you're not going to change it. But as a, I was a line officer, um, I believe I was awarded when I, uh, coming through the line of Mount Olivet Lodge, I decided that 
I really taken a lot of the teachings of Freemasonry to heart. So the way this is, is <clears throat> I have my initials, which I am a third, which is why there's a three. And intersecting that is a, a, um, a plum along with a level, and that's elevated just above a square. Um, taking the principles of basically the three offices of, of Freemasonry, the, the, the senior and junior wardens, as, and as well as the master, uh, a lot of those principles I took as my own and I figured I wanted myself to be surrounded by them. And that was the perfect way I could represent that on a penny. Um, and then it was just a matter of bringing it to my work and engraving it. But I, I think it was unique, especially since I have a full letter initial with a number that uh, not many people would replicate that. And then I clear coated in lacquer so it wouldn't damage the, the bronze in the future. So that's how that came about. 10 years ago this month. Well, as I said, in a book of Marx, if you can ever find one, you can also Google that and you can see diff many different images from different books that are online. Uh, Marx differ greatly. Uh, some of them are very simple designs. I have seen some absolutely gorgeous pieces of art that have been uh, given over as a mark for an individual. I will tell you this, that not everyone uh, put their mark on their pen. Of, I would say probably about 1% of all those who took this degree ever had their penny engraved, which is a sad thing. Uh, but when you do find them, they're a great piece. Uh, I have seen and have had a couple in my own collection. Um, but again, unfortunately, I cannot date them. Now, unless you have an idea of that chapter and when the pennies came out. But again, as I mentioned, Cambridge had bought five versions of the penny over the years, and so did a number of other uh, Royal Arts chapters in, here, in this state of Massachusetts. So dating them is rather difficult. I will say that the George Washington Masonic Memorial down in Alexandria, Alexandria, Virginia, has an enormous collection of Masonic Royal Arts chapter pennies. They are highly, highly uh, collectible, and when I first started, uh, some almost uh, 35 years ago in this field, uh, you could buy a penny for uh, maybe three or four, five dollars. Today, the average is eight to ten dollars. Some I've seen go up to fifty dollars or more, depending on the penny. But there's still a great piece of history. So thank you for chiming in. If you like what you've seen, give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment. Ask a question. Be happy to answer, um, and we'll try to get some more pictures of chapter pennies once this gets on our Facebook page, Masonic Curious. Thank you.